American television sitcom The Parkers aired for five seasons on UPN from August 30th, 1999 to May 10th, 2004. It was created by television producers and writers Ralph Farquhar, Sarah V. Finney, and Vita Spears, the same creators of Moesha, another UPN hit, which featured the character of Kim Parker. Given her popularity for four seasons on Moesha, the actress who played her, Countess Vaughn, left the show in 1999 for its spin-off, The Parkers. The series centers on the relationship between a mother and daughter, Nikki and Kim Parker, who reside in Santa Monica, California, while both attending the local Santa Monica College. Nikki is played by comedian Monique. It was produced by Big Ticket Television in association with Serendipity Productions and, in the first season only, Reagan John Productions. It was executive produced by Ralph Farquhar, Sarah V. Finney, Vita Spears, Bill Boulware, and Andrea Wiley. The catchy theme song called We're the Parkers was composed by famed record producer, rapper, and songwriter Rodney Jerkins and Countess. That's also her voice singing it. The mother-daughter student duo came to be when Nikki decided to enroll in college with Kim after being forced to drop out almost 20 years prior, when she discovered she was pregnant with Kim. Professor Stanley Ogilvy, played by Dorian Wilson, teaches at Santa Monica College. Nikki falls head over heels for him while he spends the majority of the show running away from her affections. Over time though, she eventually wins him over and they get married in the series finale. Stevie Allison Van Lowe, played by Jenna Von Oy, attends college with Kim and is her best friend. Thaddeus Tyrell Radcliffe, better known as T, played by Ken Lawson, is also a college student as well as friend to Kim and Stevie. Desiree Littlejohn, played by Mari Morrow, is the Parker's neighbor and Nikki's friend. The character ended up being short-lived though, as she only appears in the first half of the first season. The reason for her departure depends on which source you believe. Some say it was because the producers felt the chemistry would be better if a heavier actress portrayed Nikki's friend, while another mentioned that the producers wanted to include the character in more scenes in the future, meaning that Mari would have to appear on the show more often. Since she was a real estate agent in LA and only wanted to act part-time, a more demanding schedule wasn't gonna work for her. That left the door open for Andell Wilkerson, played by Yvette Wilson, to come into the picture midway through the first season to replace Desiree as Nikki's friend. Andell, like Kim, actually first originated as a regular character on Moesha. Little did people know, until many years later, the Parkers almost didn't happen at all if it weren't for a major personal decision made by Countess. In 2014, while attending a therapy session during an episode of TV One's Hollywood Divas, she shared what she'd been through in the past while trying to make it big in Hollywood. As she recalled the difficult journey, she opened up about how after she began working on the Parkers, she discovered she was pregnant, which caused her to worry about her future in the industry. The then 18-year-old Cher that she was afraid of losing her role on the show if people found out. With that in mind, Countess decided to terminate as she didn't want the pregnancy to ruin her career. By the end of the first season of The Parkers, it nudged the bottom of the ratings when it came to white viewers and was also low rated among crossover mainstream audiences. But it was not only the number one comedy on UPN, it elbowed its way ahead of the WB's The Steve Harvey Show, previously the most popular show among Black audiences. The Parkers, which initially faced pointed reviews from critics who denounced its outlandish, over-the-top characters, ended up attracting more Black viewers with its mix of broad comedy and character-driven stories than the lower-key, more sophisticated, suburban-themed comedy of ABC's The Hughleys and The WB's For Your Love which many saw as a formula that might broaden the appeal of ethnic comedies. It should also be mentioned though that ratings for the two suburban comedies, which received far more critical praise, were also affected by scheduling, as they competed against each other Friday at 9.30 p.m., in essence splitting the potential audience. Some industry veterans suggested that the Parkers connected more with younger Black viewers than For Your Love and The Hughleys, in part because its humor is more reminiscent of other popular sitcoms, such as Martin and The Wayans Brothers. Todd Boyd, a USC professor of cinema, gave his expert opinion about it in an LA Times article in 2000. When you look at the last five years of Black representation on TV, the shows that tend to be the most outrageous also tend to be the shows that draw the most audiences. 
The Parkers has that same sort of humor that would appeal to those audiences, while the Hughleys and For Your Love take place in an environment that is not entirely African American. In that same article, Ann Brown, one of the editors of The A-List, an urban entertainment newsletter added, the Hughleys and For Your Love may fall through the cracks in the Black audience demographic. Young Black people relate to the Parkers, and they wouldn't relate as much to the Hughleys or For Your Love. On the other hand, those shows may not be edgy enough for Black audiences, who are turning to comedies like Sex in the City that goes places the Hughleys can't. Indeed, the success of the Parkers came amid the continuing controversy over ethnic images on network television. Nikki and Kim are physically large and are loud in their obnoxious, colorful wardrobes, makeup looks, and extremely animated conversations. Kim is boy crazy, while Nikki has her sights set on the professor, who is clearly uninterested in her advances. When the series debuted, many critics noted its stereotypical characters. One prominent producer in the wake of the show's success said, The Parkers is a dumber, more in-your-face show than the others, which are more sophisticated. Yet, all of a sudden, it's become this hit at UPN. Larry Little, president of Big Ticket Television, which developed the Parkers and Moesha, counters that notion. Yes, the characters are not sophisticated, but that's by design. There are a lot of real people who are not sophisticated, but possess sophisticated dreams and themes. They are very real, very blue collar. This is a mother who has raised her child and now decides to better herself by going back to college. They have a very loving relationship and it's also very funny. The success of the Parkers is even more surprising considering it lacks marquee value. Monique, a comedian who plays the outlandish Nikki, had never acted before. Then UPN Entertainment president Tom Noonan said that he did not find the success of the Parkers surprising, even with its lack of star power. If there was any show we felt confident about, it was the Parkers. The chemistry between Monique and Countess was apparent from the first rehearsal, and it's a much more emotional show than what people expected. Both women have dating lives, fears, and hopes. It's one of the most honest shows on television, and the show is not afraid to have characters that are not picture perfect. Also from the start of the show, fans immediately noticed how strong the chemistry was between Monique and Dorian, even though his character had no romantic interest in hers. Some fans even thought they were together in real life, though Monique was married to her now ex-husband Mark Jackson at the time. Over the years, they've both spoken highly of one another and maintained a close friendship. On the flip side, Countess was forced to endure painful comparisons between her and her peer co-star, Jenna Von Oy. In a 2022 interview with fellow actress Cherry Johnson, known for her role on the 90s ABC hit Family Matters, as well as appearing in a few episodes of The Parkers, Countess opened up about her experience having her body compared to Jenna and how it ultimately affected her self-esteem and led her to get silicone butt injections. They used to clown me on the show. They'd be like, you're a black girl and Jenna Von Oy's butt is bigger than yours and she's a white girl. And that used to bother the heck out of me. That used to be the joke all the time. The castmates even nicknamed Jenna White Chocolate due to her figure. Countess's self-esteem took a hit at the time when she saw the attention that Jenna's physique would garner on set. Because I'm a black girl and I'm supposed to have a big butt. You know, you fall into these stereotypes. You feel like I'm supposed to have this. And then you'd see all the attention she would get for having it. They would lose their minds. I'm like, ass is everything. In 2009, cast members Countess, Jenna, Ken, and Dorian appeared on The Monique Show for a full-length episode, The Parker's Reunion. Series creator Sarah V. Finney was part of the audience. Yvette didn't appear due to her busy work schedule. The Parker's The Complete Collection, containing all five seasons, was released in North America on DVD in a 14 disc set in 2016. The series started streaming on Netflix in 2020. Naturally, after that launch, conversations kicked up again about a possible reboot. However, based on some comments from Monique, it doesn't seem likely at all. During a 2021 interview on Fox Soul's Get Into It with Tammy Roman, when Monique was asked whether she would be open to a reboot, she said that it wouldn't be possible without everyone there essentially reminding Tammy of the death of Yvette Wilson, who passed away in 2012 after a battle with cervical cancer. Monique said she wouldn't feel good doing the show without her. 
Monique also added that regardless of whether or not a reboot happens, she's thankful for the impact of the show. As grateful for the acting experience as Monique may be, she made it clear in the spring of 2023 that she was still owed something. A lot more money. On April 12th, she filed a breach of contract lawsuit against CBS Studios, Paramount Pictures, and Big Ticket Productions in Los Angeles Superior Court, claiming she's owed unpaid royalties from the Parkers, per court documents obtained by People. She's seeking monetary damages, which she has requested to be determined by a jury at trial, as well as reimbursement of her legal fees. Monique alleged in the complaint that the companies unfairly structured the show's profitability so that they could, quote, retain millions that would otherwise be contractually due, end quote, to her and husband Sidney Hicks's production company, Hicks Media. It noted, while the series has proven to be a major financial success for its producers and distributors, the series' talent have not been permitted to share in the fruits of that success. The legal docs also stated that she reasonably expected to enjoy significant contingent compensation from the series' revenues. Given the Parker's success, citing how the sitcom both ceased production after 110 episodes, placing it above the lucrative 100-episode threshold traditionally necessary for a television show to be syndicated, and the contractual limitations placed on how the series' AGR must be calculated. However, it continued, that expectation has not proven to be the reality. Monique learned about the alleged breach of contract through a similar complaint the writers and creators of the Parkers filed. They filed a similar lawsuit the year before, alleging that CBS had engaged in various forms of, quote, financial malfeasance, end quote, to artificially inflate expenses and suppress profit payments. The network settled that case out of court that November. Monique's suit added, Plaintiff is further informed and believes and thereupon alleges that the series writers and creators performed a forensic audit and that this forensic audit of the series books and records strongly suggested that defendants have inequitably structured the series finances to artificially depress its profitability and retain millions that would otherwise be contractually due and owing to plaintiff. Several months later in September, Monique released a video on Instagram asking CBS to pay, not only her, but also her co-star, Countess Vaughn, fairly for their work on the sitcom. Monique claims that during the 24 years the Parkers has been on the air, including reruns, the network has tried to convince her and Countess that the series has made, quote, absolutely no money, end quote. So what we're asking you, CBS, is can you please treat these two black women fairly? When our brother Dave Chappelle, who ironically had a deal with CBS, said he signed the deal out of desperation and it was a bad deal, they were able to go back and do the right thing. And they made that deal fair and they paid Dave Chappelle what he rightfully deserved. What we're asking you, CBS, don't pay us any more, but don't pay us any less. Hours later, Countess released her own video supporting her on-screen mother. You know, people trip me out, always saying something like, you know, we lying, it's not true. Yes, give us our money. You would be mad if you worked all weekend when it's time to get your check. They go, oh, you know, the last other checks that should cover it. You know, we paid you already. No, but did you give me for my services now, today? All the days that you have, have played our, uh, our episodes, pay that. It's not fair. Not much more was said about the issue until February 2024, when CBS and the production company behind the Parkers slammed Monique's multi-million dollar lawsuit. According to court documents obtained by RadarOnline.com, in a newly filed response, the defendants argued for two claims to be dismissed. They said Monique brought her case after finding out about the writer's lawsuit. Their lawyers wrote, It is abundantly clear that Monique is not actually aware of any basis for any of the claims brought in this action. Monique makes it clear that its allegations are premised on information and belief, based on an audit performed on behalf of the writers and creators of the Parkers, the series, and subsequent litigation filed by those writers' creators. CBS and the production company said Monique was offered the chance to participate in the audit with the writers, but declined. The defendant said the entertainer never made any claims she was not paid on time or prevented from doing her own audit. So far, Monique has yet to respond. 